So, the co coaching points here for us is he hovers over the fly, right? right? He has to play the sail up to it's basically going to three. Correct. Now, if they hand the fly off, he has to tackle it. Correct. But he hovers over it and he's ready to play the sail Correct. up to it. He shuffles mm -hmm. and gets his eyes on the next vertical throw. Correct. Right? Right? And if that guy blocks, he has to run the alley. That guy vert was vertical, he has to cover the vertical, but the hover player is going to hold the sail. Correct. Sail, curl, flat. Correct. Right? Okay? All right, so you tell them to do the same thing on ghost motion. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so in this situation here, when that guy ghosts, This guy is hovering over there. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So it goes through a two by two formation. Okay. This guy's next vertical is that one. Yeah. So he's got a key as the next vertical. If mm -hmm. so that guy blocks, mm -hmm. he's got to get down in there. Correct. Okay. The so harder one is when they both go back because then. So that the safety, the free safety as you have it, would be your fox player for us. The corner would be in the fit of one block. It's like whenever, whenever it was a bunch like this, we would include, you know, um, right there, this down. Yeah. we yeah. would include one. So we would start with one, number one. Yeah. Here. We would include them. Because okay. he's the only guy that's going to tell you if it's going back. So we, we see one to three. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if one stays, then we're picking up three. If their eyes are completely one to three. Any bunch, they're all can three for this. We can yeah, one. Yeah, so you're trying I to mean, see one. Yeah, yeah. Yes. so we're trying to see is one coming back, is one and three coming back. That's a whole thing right there. And then you also have the same bunch of issues as this in the run game. In the tight run, we get it on. But we haven't fixed it. So their issues last year when I watched them, people were hitting and miss, and they were clipping it. Yeah. And then they were running speed option with counter back here. Right. And they had all the hands in Yeah. So I said, we're not clipping a bunch. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that. So we stayed tight, correct? And the other issue they had last year was when they were bringing pressure, okay, just say it's a three man field three, is this guy was folding. Right. He was blocking out. Okay, and, he, yeah. and they were getting two outside. Mm -hmm. 
So our rule is if you're a rush, is you line up on the point in Q3. And if three's in, you're in. And if three's out, you're out. Okay? Our rule is if you're a drop, you're staying out. And now the field safety keeps three. And if three's in, he's in. Okay? And if three's out, he's out. Okay? Yeah. But when we were in quarters, we, this guy was just so soft when they ran it in. Did you ever have any issues with that? No, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, we got it. We got a fair amount of it. I think, um, I don't remember that. I think when, when, when I reviewed it all, I don't remember that being a major issue. I think there's always going to be corners that are going to be struggling to we're going to play certain teams where they don't make that corner tackle. We can try to, yeah. you know, we can close door one and door two, but usually they're pretty proficient getting right. door five and six open. Right. But I think um, the only only other way you can avoid something like that is, is moving front. You may try to throw by guys, you know what I mean, right. send it somewhere else. Otherwise, you've got the numbers, you know. So our answer was, any tight bunch and tight, mm -hmm. they checked it same through. Yeah. Which meant we were bringing the pressure mm -hmm. from the bunch side. Yeah. And so we always had this guy came in three. Right. And our corner never had to be in fit because when we were in three, we told this field safety he had to fit in that crowd. Mm -hmm. He keyed it. These guys are both keyed. Yeah. So when this guy went out, he was out and he was out. Mm -hmm. And this guy went in, he was in and he was in. Right. And our corner never had a tackle. Right. Sounds so good. good. Yeah. That was what we went to, but the only problem is if you had this formation, we were not going to Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we weren't getting anything later in the year that anybody was attacking for. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, all right, let's go back to this issue right Yeah. Here. All right, so we're here. So like if um, if he were to if he were to come back, then well the linebackers would come back Correct. right right now. Correct. So like there'd still be like if they blocked out, there's still gaps there with those two. So that that's free safety is still he's still your fox. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. You're saying that on play action he plays outside of it. Correct. And he pushes the post. Correct. That's what you're saying. Correct. Fox. Yes. Correct. So even if he came back, he'd yeah. still push Correct. the post. Yeah. And he would stay outside the next yeah. yeah. Yeah, the safety played the C, the back played the A, the jack would play the C. Okay. What about what about this here when they were doing that and you had an athletic quarterback and that guy's coming too? Did you ever put him in that too? You could. Um, you never needed it. Yeah, never needed it. I mean if we if you can make that stuff go sideways and try to run it down, you know. Yeah. So you've got good width with that B over there or whoever that outside backer is. Yeah. A lot of it's the technique. In my mind, with him, if he's able to play it on the line, make it go sideways. You know, so like the, with that safety, the, the, um, one of the things we're trying to get better at, and I felt like it was Wisconsin who did a really good job with it, and, I, and I've, I've probably done a poor job with it with our guy. And uh, yeah, we hired Bill, so Bill Bush is with us. Oh yeah. yeah so Bill would be great. Yeah, I, I, thought, I interviewed Bill at Kentucky. Yeah, I thought Wisconsin Bill did a really good job. I think we need we need that help and everything, but. What well, we used to be able to say was, you know, um, from the safety standpoint, if you, you know, where, are you in the fit, are you out of the fit? And so if we were, if, if ever it was a Fox player, right, um, that, it was walk out forward for that safety, you know what I mean? So he would walk out at the snap, he would walk out. So you have, you always, there's always that aggressor and protector. Right. All, all the way through. And so the aggressor would pat his feet. 
you know, basically like to that bunch look, that safety down the bunch in that box, he's going to pat his feet, corner, playing crack place, essentially. Right. So the safety away to the Fox player is walking out. So that's what you'd like to have. You know, I'm, I'm ashamed to say there's not a lot of film that shows that. There's more practice film. Um, and I think we've addressed that. I think we'll be better with that. But um, the footwork there, I think, is hopeful. So like, say, for example, in that look right there, we walk on out. They run that uh, uh, bluff play, we call it, and it's going sideways. He'd walk out, clear pass, or, or um, clear any pass, no pass, stick his foot around, be an out of player. He'd still should be a knockdown guy. safety. Yeah. Yes. So a knockdown would be a clear pass, it's a run, I can add in. Right? Where the aggressor safety is on run to pass. Correct. Yeah. So this guy would clear pass first. Correct. Correct. And this guy, since he's the aggressor, he's Correct. the left foot. Mm -hmm. And he's there. Mm -hmm. well, so I think the footwork and teaching that, and I, I, I always felt this, because I probably learned this a, a while back, and then I think the, I was not adequate in, in instructing all of it, so I ended up learning it again. But the footwork, I think, is integral in, in teaching that. So it's like, say for example, like a, if, I'm a, if I'm an outside linebacker in an apex or in a one by five and I pat my feet, right? Okay. As opposed to whatever, you know what I mean? Maybe taking a step, or you get the RPOs and you're stepping this way and throwing right. a slam over there. So I think the footwork with the skill play, I think, the, I think the footwork ties in with the technique. You know, so that way, when you're watching it, you can see, all right, he's thinking this. So the footwork says, you know, I'm an apex player. I know that I'm, I'm reading in that line scrimmage. If I get a run look, I pat my feet because I'm an in-between guy. There's only one ball, but wherever it goes, that's where I'm going to go. Or he's pat, or he's patting his feet as a safety. He knows he's the aggressor. He knows he's got this help. You know what I mean? It right. ties it. They, they're, they're not, I think if you, if you just say, hey, this is my job, that's your job, and there's nothing that ties them in, then I think... It's hard to learn. That's right. Yeah. I, I, think the, I think the footwork, I think the footwork locks them in. Yeah. And so I've always felt that, and then going off this past year especially, I'm almost convinced of it now. You know, uh, being a D-line guy, footwork, yeah. you know, told you your technique. Yeah. Am yeah. I an attack react? Am yeah. I react attack? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost yeah. So we, we would have times where we'd be teaching it, just like how we were talking about it now, but we were not stressing the footwork piece of it. And shit, man, we'd walk, look at the film the, the day after the, you know, we'd grab a bite to eat, come up, and watch the practice film. It'd be the exact opposite of what we're trying to do. You know what I mean? And so right. I think the, the footwork is, is important. Right. But yeah, so that, you know, that dude would be a knockdown safety, you know, that, that, um, so like, a, so like what Wisconsin used to do. There's another one up there. Yeah. yeah. So Wisconsin used to do this. They, they used to turn the lights a little bit. Yeah. They used to turn the lights a little bit. Yeah. And here it is. Yeah, Wisconsin. This is really like this. So this kind of, this kind of shows a little bit. So let's say that's the field. Yeah. And let's say here. Switch alert, or is it? Is it you just go to, to hammer and fox alert to that side? You know, like this was a for two years in Wisconsin. This was spring ball, fall camp. Well, when you were at your first year at LSU, yes, and you played Wisconsin, yes, 
they were in that formation yeah. half the time. Yeah. They yeah. were pinched or bunched mm -hmm. half the time against you. Mm -hmm. And you played it well. Your safeties, you yeah. had, uh, what's his name? Yeah. 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 yeah, Jamal, yeah. But he played, played it really well. Yeah, and so I think, you know, I like, so like the, you know, the, we see that too. We call it the wedge play. The wedge is like a number one, one of the number one plays we saw this past year. You know, a lot of it was all out of bunch. And so, uh, so like, you know, it'd be this right here. They're going to block power, right? So it's power without pulling. So they're blocking down here. Yeah, so not be the wedge. You know, so that's the one you're saying, but this is going to come in. Yes. You know, but I think, I, um, I mean, to me, you know, so like, that's the one here. we see all the time. And, and this was a five-year game for us. Yeah. In orders. Yeah. So I went to that. Yeah. Yes. No, it's good. And I think, you know, so I think this can be. There is a big difference for us when we had um, when we had a freshman playing this position, and then when we had a veteran. When we had a veteran, he's locking that out, and it's primary gap, secondary gap. But when it's a freshman, he's playing primary out. That's a big difference, you know. But I, I think the um, um, yeah, so you get wedged, so we would look like that, and then this would be your mm -hmm. aggressor, and then this would be your block out here. Yeah. So if you think play pass off of it, you can get it. Right. I mean, we got more of the run over here. You know what I mean? Because the the, the the rover over here and seeing this a lot of times is being patient. Like so we'd be we'd be uh, pushed over to 50 zero. So the rover had to make sure you play this backside A. You know, they're, they're looking this thing could hit either of these spots, which is a good play for them. You know? yeah. um, and then we would move the front on some of that too if we did if we wanted to. I mean like the, you could go eagle to it and, and this helped it somewhat by uh, playing a three to this side and this it, it took them and cleared this up from the lower and I think the back saw this cleaner whereas if it was just tight he wouldn't see this. So it funneled the play over here. We had to do a lot of this this year, yeah. but I never moved that guy to a five. Yeah, we, we would only on, um, you know, yeah, a lot of it was that, we call that eagle. So we would eagle um, left or right. And so there's a lot of merit to you know, you have a nine, you have a four, you have a shade. There's, there's a lot of merit to have a three on the back side that can squeeze blocks and all right. that. It's good. Um, and we have a sure to have a this speed option over here. Yeah. He went to a three, and then they got it. Mm -hmm. They got the second level as opposed to the Yeah. So, yeah. And the only issue I ever had on the gap schemes was, I guess it was when this guy went to a five, I guess he had a gap over here. Yeah. Now you've got you got to squeeze it down. Yeah, yeah. you got that issue. You don't have enough. Yeah, I think, I think when you're playing, when you're playing, um, when you come from a tight defense perspective, and so what's great about what's great about tight, and I think we talked about this before, is zones. And so if, if they can, you know, one of the coaches there by Nevada, and I remember we were calling Kaepernick and everything, uh, and Nevada, we played a lot of twos. That was a base defense in Hawaii, and a lot of it was all based upon calling and the, and the pistol, and they'd come down like this, and so just, just like this line. guard, yeah, and this was all live, this guard with I mean, was, uh, Nevada, the whole line coach, uh, Norcross, Cross. yeah, he was there, and Cameron Norcross was there, and they would take these steps, swing these arms back like this, these guards, you know, like this. And it wasn't coming from here, it was coming from here, it was kind of just, just blasting people and the same thing you would step it. Yeah. You know, like you're um, like the USC, like um, um, you know, the center's just slamming on the three. Yeah. But this would be just tight zone, you know. And so these guys are just speaking. So that it wasn't coming this way, it was coming this way. And I just felt when we played threes in, in shades, the angles were I didn't, I didn't like the angles. It was better for us to play twos, and then when that guard is stepping and stepping here, we would come off the ball, and we would be at this level. You know, and just thinking 
you off that. The shades, when they're when they're setting you up and, and slamming you from the side, I think that I think that eliminates the advantage of shades. Right? right. Yes. And so when you're when they're working this way. When this is a patsy and this is the real thing, the knockback I think is hopeful, and I think that perspective is what's great about this this uh, alignment is that you want that. You know, and if you can get that, and then you're talking with this, that's what you want. And then you got guys that can rock back and you're squeezing, condensing, and all that stuff. Right now, um, within that. Let's say, let's say if there's tendencies, like there's certain people that will play the, the line off teams and all that, where whoever that tight end was, that's where they ran, so you just need to eat into your tight end. Right? And you could get the same concept as that, but here you're just getting a guy. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of merit to that. And then, you know, some you of kept the, that guy on four, though. Yes, right? four, yeah. yeah. So that, that'd be all evil. And so a lot of, you know, like the power stuff is still good. And you're going to have two guys, um, two guys could be in the, in, the, in the gap over here, especially if it goes this weak side. But he would condense it. Like say, um, like say if it was counted, let's say, and it came back this way, right? So you can see it here. But this thing was condensed so much. We talked about him crossing, and he never really needed to cross. He was just knocking the guy back, yeah. and this thing disappeared. And so all those, um, that, there's a lot of merits that we play a lot of eagle. This is probably just as much as tight. I mean, if there's an opportunity to eagle, we need Did your backer check it? Yes. Did you call it from the sideline? No, no, it's not that. Yeah, we built in. Yeah, all of this stuff is like that. So your eagle would be equivalent to a clip it or something for that week. On Correct. Or something. Correct. So if you wanted to eagle to the back, you right. wanted to eagle to the tight end, Correct. or you wanted to, Correct. yeah, and we yeah. were doing a lot of that this year too. Yes. We were calling terror. Yeah. yeah. So the only the issue there, all that's good, unless they give you two speed and you got a three and an apex. So you have any problems there? With with what? So, so if you got this, if you were eagling to the tight end and you were in jack four, yeah, if it's a garbage on, we're not just doing this. Yeah, yeah, we can still do it. I think it's two risk over there. Yeah. And this guy would be an apex mm -hmm. and in the three. That's tight, man. This was the guy was getting all of the thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was no relief there. Yeah, we would still do it, but I mean, yeah, we would do it. I think the, you know, I think the, it's the setup. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to hear, because I think, um, Background and stuff that's really interesting to me. It's like hearing, hearing you talk on it and then hearing some of these other guys come and talk on it. Because I, I think, like, uh, um, we would sit for, uh, maybe I would sit for two days and look up at, on the screen and look up on all the hit charts and the boards um, just exclusively where they went to. You know what I mean? Um, here's two years ago, someone showed them, someone, someone kind of lined up like how we're lining up, this is what they did, here's this, and we didn't do a lot, so we didn't have a bunch of other stuff, so like, the whole gig was, was that, that, that was that, that yeah. was the whole gig, there was nothing else. Now that's a different approach than at, at Wisconsin we had, you know, tight was more of home base, it was less of, hey, it's this, hey, it's that at the front, it was just, but, well, this is chill because we're doing shit, you know, we're doing stuff in, in other calls, you know what I mean? So it was a different mindset. I, did, I, I didn't go about it like that at Wisconsin. Wisconsin was more, hey, we're, we're going to run tight so you can have a cup of coffee because we're doing this other shit. On uh, first down, third down, we're going to be hitting the bear. That's a completely different deal. We're here, it's like, fuck, we're going to run tight and they ain't going to have leverage on us on fucking anything. And, and you know from the league the war, I imagine this league's the same, but you know, so much of it is gimmick plays, right? So yeah. it was just one week, you know, they're copying so and so and the next week they're copying so and so and they knew that this play hit this team, so they did so you know, I felt so a lot of it was how much of it is real, how much of it is versus us, right? And then at the same time we're gonna have to rep it, so when we're repping it and I'm getting our guys looking at it, we gotta 
and make sure it's fit. So that's like a huge, you might as well just throw a bunch of shit on the wall and try to, you know, um, make, it, you know, make it a mural, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so like, that, so like, that's the whole thing. So I think when it's that approach, right, that is different than, like, so we would run some, some eagle and stuff at, at Wisconsin, but I didn't nearly put the time as we do now. You know what I mean? Right. Like the eagle and slide. Like, you know, you're talking about, I'm, 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 uh, I think I've got, you know, uh, you know, I go to these things that we're at right now. In the past, and I'd be talking about, you know, this pressure, I'd talk about this creeper. And, I mean, part this year we ran eagles slide. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what we did, bro. What was slide? No, that was the five. That was the oh, five. Okay. But all of it was based upon, like, two years. Uh, like here's what they've done. Here's what they, here's what they're going to go to. And so I think when it's like that, and you get to an ending point, then it's I think it's different. I'm, I, I'm, I think it is. I don't know. I want to go hear people because I want to see how they get to it. But like um, we would, but that was always a concern. Was that right there? But um, I guess if we got pools, if we got uh, if we got gaps, you know. Um, so let me talk about, let me say it like this, okay? If we got just, we call this pin and pool, so the language. So there we go that. Right, and let's say they're here and here. And I got, we got no issue with that. We fit that, we can fit that. I don't know, we were freshmen here. We, there's, a, there's a possibility about screwing this up, but I would take that, right? We don't need to adjust anything here. Now, if they were to do this, Our fire zones, we had the same rules. So everything was, we couldn't, I didn't think we could make it to where we could say, hey, we, you know, this call we're going to do this, but not, this other call we're not. And then this third call, now we are. So we had to do it all the same. But so if a, if a team if a team had like a pointer, kind of we're talking with the, the D line coach, if the team pointed to where they were going to run, now we would want to eagle, you know. Um, but if a team had, if, if they were trying to pin us with a tight end and pull two people outside of it, we had to get a five over there. Yeah. We had to slide it down. And so sometimes that may be, that was trips, you know. You see a lot of trips. You see a lot of the pin and pull. The, the uh, counters. The counter trips. Kind of trips mm -hmm. and Did you ever feel that sliding it would give them more of an angle to pin pull you? No, uh, no, I felt good about sliding it. I mean, now, but see, I think, I'm starting to talk about this, I probably got, we got sidetracked with it. I think once you are from a tight perspective and you move, you move, you move, you move to um, shades, they still got to play tight. I mean, the so right side backers for sure. And then the D-line, they got to squeeze blocks, they got to get hands on, they got to be thick. Correct. Because now, I know, like, for, and I bring that up because like, with, uh, there's two coaches in particular I'm thinking of right now. I mean, uh, Gary Anderson, he's a great, great coach. I learned so much from him. Um, but he's going to love his D-line. He's going to want them to be vertical anytime. And they got him looking for an house somewhere. And so, um, and so I say that to say there's times in their minds, both of those guys, where when we're talking, 
if it's three four, they will understand three four. Like I don't, I don't really. I think of like this. I think of it from a linebacker perspective, where D linemen are squeezing shit all the time. Right. So that's easy for me. I go, okay, what's next? But for these guys, they're thinking, okay, I understand the three four. We got to squeeze and everything else. But once we get to four three spacing, I'm playing the shit that I grew up learning to to do. And right. you know what I mean? In their mind, that's what they're thinking. Right. And, but I, I think once you move your three, four alignments to shades, that four, three stuff can't cook in. It's still got to be squeezing blocks. It's got to like that. The end to a, a, a fight technique has got to be thick. He can't be, he can't be sitting out here. I mean, that can't happen. He's got to be in here. Yeah. Squeezing that and friction in that, and that's not a free release. And the three technique's got to be thick, squeezing all that. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, I, I had to learn that because, I mean, I never, and my, I would assume that, you know what I mean? Um, and they would assume, you know what I mean, that I'm free. <laughs> well, he coaches these things to his position. That's right. There's no doubt about it. So, you know, I mean, this is the second secondary coach, head coach I've worked for. They're not always counting numbers. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. like, well, we got a post player, we got a flat defender, yeah. we're climbing it up. Yeah. And in my mind, well, now we're going to eight man spaces. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to nine man spaces. Yeah. yeah. And you know, sometimes you'll say it's the same outfit. Well, it's yeah. not. There's one less guy. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not the same outfit. Yeah. It's, it's teaching inside backers yeah. that this call is eight man space yeah. as opposed to nine man space, and it's going to be tough. Yeah. yeah. But there was, we were better, I think, at times, mm -hmm. even, to be honest, in slot under than tight versus counter some gas schemes. You know what I mean? Um, Did you play slide with any call? Yeah. Yeah, once we had it, I mean, we would have three calls, so we you had it. You, yeah. had, um, you had tight four, which you could play tight, eagle, or slide. Right. You had field slam three, yeah. and you had over or under one. Yeah, and we had saw, which was the same, same, same thing. So saw was that a tight? Correct. Correct. So saw, field, tight, all same moves. Yeah. So, like, so, like, here's an example. Like, here's one thing here. So, let's say this play right here. So, if they're lined up like this, so, like, what do they do out of that? If they run the down play and they run, like, counter OY, then we could, we could, um, just ego that. We're all right to do that, I think, you know? Now, if they were to, um, run the down play, you know, if they were to run zone, you know, down, zone we are, yeah. Counter O Y, but then counter O T read. Yes. And then I want to slide. Mm -hmm. That would be the determining factor there. You know what I mean? And so every week it was kind of that. But like, you know, let's talk about the counter though. And so a lot of this right here would be you know, these slings and all this. So like this would be a sling for us. If they're in here, this would be you know, sniffer, you know, strong weak, what else? Uh, strong weak. But the, I, the thought would be, is that for, um, we played those a lot, a lot in the 30s. We treated it as two backs. So, and so if we're in type four, on a two back rules, it was always 30s. And, but then we have you know, two by two, 30s, and then we have any form of three by one would be zero fifty. And so you know, say for instance, if it was something like this, a lot of it was that. Your two by two was with thirty. What's it say for your two by two? It's thirties. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So say it's three by one. Yeah. It would be zero fifty over here. But then the right. issue was the counter and everything coming back. So like we would look at this one one thing that would help would be being thirties. Now a lot of that was predicated on you know what the, the worst part test. Where's all the dots? Are there? Are there, is all the ink here? Is all the ink there? Right. So the thirties I thought helped, and we would fall back on the, on the downplay. You know what I mean? We fall back on. We treat this in this zone king. You know, if it's two by two, we're working to the side of the thirties. We're working to the side of the zone read. We're working that way. So we treat it the same. The thirties, the three by one. And so we would start here with our eyes. So if he was out, we'd go here and we would rock back that way. So the thirties, I think, helped. You know, but then the show me if the back was on the other side. Yeah, if the back was on the other side. It didn't matter. So 
the back was on, on this side. You played 50-10. Mm -hmm. And if the back went to this side, you went back to 30. Because of count. Mm -hmm. Because of count. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we were doing that. We were uh, shading away from the back. Yeah. For counting. Yeah. So, so wherever that, our rule was, if we were playing a counter team, was the inside backers would shade away from the back. Yeah. Which is kind of what you're saying too. Yeah. So if it was something like this, if it was like that, you know, we would squeeze this and just squeeze it here. But I felt good about, I mean, that, a lot of it maybe your matchup. You're talking about this gap, this is the gap where we're talking about disappeared. So a lot of times we would squeeze that. Yeah. And then we'd be here. So that the linebackers would spill front side. If it was any type of rock back, uh, we knocked it back. So like we leveraged all the counters. So if there was any type of run outside, like a power or something like that, we could spill it. But any rock back turn back was the rule. So you yeah. spilled outside runs? Well, yeah, for like front side runs, you would spill it. But if it, if it was any type of counter, it was like, if it was a rock back, we turned it back. And so like, um, so like say that look right there, compared with this look, so let's say it's this, and let's say it's this. Let's say we're just playing tight. And we're off the ball over here, like in a trips. Or in a sling, say it's a sling look over here. It's like sling trips, so he's in that, that spacing. So he's not being looked at as a threat, so he's here. This was easier than that. This was a better fit than that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You'd rather be in shape. You see what I mean? The angles are better here than they are there. So like there, you, like say, um, like if we're in something like this, and let's say we we, we just lined up 0 50, mm -hmm. there's issues with that. Correct. Right? Same yeah. issues especially, I have. Especially if you're keeping this guy out. Correct. There's issues there. Yes. And so, the, you know, this was better when we played a lot of it like this. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Did you get, this was like one of our biggest issues in the title. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was one of our biggest issues in the title. Run, was in this block. Yeah. Out of tight on gap skins. Was that guy who was a bypass? Yeah. Uh, not in the past we have, not this year, a year ago we did. And you, you know, um, how much tight did they run before you came? Did they run a lot of tight? They ran a lot of tight, but it was, um, and I, I ran a lot of it too. It was what we call screw. Yeah. It wasn't on a tight floor. Okay. So it would, they always had, and screw, and I'm talking about today, it's the same concept when I talk to you about load. Right. And the fact that you right. always have nine man space, right? Because right. you never have the protector, right? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you don't have as big of issues, right. As when you go right. to eight man spacing like you do in three line. Correct. Correct. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. either doing it with the, the, the back end, or you're doing it with the front end. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And so I think the I, I asked you that question though because at, at Utah State, at Wisconsin, and now at LSU, it was always the first year. It was I, we always got big splits, uh, free releases. We're not going to sell them. We're going to man it. Exactly. Right. That's what we get. That's what we got. But we didn't really get it this year. We never really got it. You know what I mean? And so, but it was, it was the first year at, at Utah State. It was the first year, the only year at Utah State. It was the first year at Wisconsin. We didn't get it the second right. or third year. And this year, we, uh, we didn't get it this year. You know what I mean? So, and so I, but I guess to answer your question, though, is um, what's the split with that would be the first thing. If this yeah. split? Yes. Yeah. So if, this, if there's a big split, then we want to move the nose, you know what I mean, to try to help. Then I think the other thing that helps in that is playing threes, you know what I mean? If there isn't a good indicator for all of it, right, but let's say, like, let's say it's a, um, What particular play, you know, the whole thing. We're trying to, we're trying to narrow it down. We would clip it. And so clip it for us would be two threes. You know what I mean? Yeah, we would clip it. Mm -hmm. 
Would you play that and type forward to Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go to two threes. They yeah. would signal that from the side. They would check. The linebackers would check. Yeah. Off so a like, certain set. Yeah, so we, 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 correct. When we built it, it's like going in, like this time last year, one of the big topics for us was that because that's what we saw. Yeah. You know what I mean? We saw big A gaps, big B gaps. That's what we did. And so if it's big A gaps, we're going to move the nose. Yeah. Big B gaps, we're going to move to four eyes. Correct. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And you can either eagle or you can clip it. To yes, get that's right. And some of it is you could do that. You could, you, if, if it's, a lot of it was that way. I remember earlier in the year, we're thinking, hey, they've shown some big splits versus tight looks. And we're thinking, you know, we're going to eagle this anyways. We're going to take one and have a shade of three. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be an issue. You know, right. You know. And that was, what, what was tough for us in Gapskin was that this guy was getting right back. Yeah. So, and then this guy had a hard time determining because he was just getting based. Correct. He didn't know right. what gap do I play yeah. into. Yeah. And if he plays into this one, yeah. you know, then yeah. you got two in that yeah. Yeah. That's what the eagle would think of. Yeah, that's what we went to doing that yeah. as well. We yeah. had to shade those guys some yeah. to help us. Mm -hmm. Now, and then, then the other part though too is that's where, so that's where I'm saying that now. At Wisconsin, if, if someone were to ask me this right here, I would say that's where you need to line move. You know what I mean? We line move there. You know what I mean? Where now, I don't know, you know um, we were so good at just with having, having Pete. And Pete was such, people would talk about, you know, I would draw something up and I'm trying to get, I have an answer in my mind. I would really like for Pete to say that answer. And, um, but I'm going to listen to what he's, what he's going to say, and people just dive into far more detail than I was thinking of or willing to embark yes. on at this yes. particular time. Yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, I mean, I'd be good with what he says. He, he, he's got his way of doing it, and of all the coaches that we have in our staff, if there's one guy that would attack it with technique, Pete was the one guy that could get it done, you know? All right. And so, Pete, you're good, but he would talk about it. That, that particular block, what is the, what's the spacing of the block, is he stepping with his right foot, is he stepping with his left foot, you know, is he putting pressure on this shot, you know, you find an answer. Correct. And so, like, but for me, the, Break that down. for me, the, the, at the, like, with the front, with, uh, with being a linebacker coach again, right, and saying, hey, we, we can't, we can't let these guys come up, come up and get us. Right. So, we would move it. so like, I get, I get, I get, like we're at um, one of the answers would be like at, at uh, Wisconsin. We ran soft, mm -hmm. we would slam. We go from four eyes to three eyes. So I mean, so like, like one of the rules we had there was if it was a two man surface, your four eye went to a three. Right. Yes. If it was a three man surface, you stayed a four eye. Mm -hmm. If it was a four man surface, then we slammed out. You know what I mean? So it was a green. So right. we were always moving. moving. You know, and that was a solve rule, or that was a solve rule. That was a solve rule. Put that down for that was a solve rule. Okay. Oh. And so that was our answer now. So since we don't move, all the so the bigger picture is all of those issues are issues of not moving. You mean you're lining up, and that's you. And that was us too. You know what I mean? I tried to move some. You know, our movements were. I, I you know we ran what we call slip strong. We ran. What you would, that would be your field dog. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you don't want any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. no. And then we ran what you would call star dog. Right. And and then we ran double edge pressure, but we played two by two quarters, three by one fire zone. Right. So we would run saw, but right. we wouldn't have run it. Right. You run it exclusively man and fire zone. Correct. Yes, which that's the way I did it in Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. But here, it allowed us to keep our nine man yeah, space. Yeah, it's good. We ran some two versus yeah. teams that, because uh, that's the coverage we run at Orton and Theismann in. And so we would run that coverage, we'd run that with, with saw when we're getting a lot of motion. You know, yeah. Fly motions and things, it's easy. They just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. we rock it, that's what we get to. Yeah. The problem is, is you get into your quarter feeders and two yes, by two. That's right. you know, you're, now we're getting bottled to death. We're bringing our Correct. our apex players and you know what I mean. Yeah. But um, so I had those movements. So I had your star dog. I had
had your um, field dog. I didn't want to chop out because I had to had first time back in the corner. But so I don't want to run Yeah. Okay, but I'm gonna run some the chop too, right? But I'm not gonna run the dog coverage. I'm really getting on tangent now. Right. I'm gonna run the fire zone. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? I'm not skip players and right. mid threes. I'm right. going same flat. Yeah. Three or two hook. Right. You know what I mean? Like third player. But you know, those those can be yeah. Those can be dangerous too. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. plenty of yeah. runs that yeah. they can get you on those. Yeah, too. I think the best the best is um like if I if I had to have my choice, the best is to have base and do it when you want to do it. You know? Yeah. And so it's like it's not an easy it's not an easy yes or no. I mean and that's the thing with those. Those are those are great, I think, as mixers. Um like one of them chopped on too. Um, are you gonna run a fire zone or a dog? Dog plus is the fire zone. Yeah, so it's the yeah, so it, we would play skiff, but if it was if it was spread out, it would be a match. We would match it. And if it was a, like a tight split, then it was your reroute. You know what I mean? We're playing the true kind of zone. So we're probably fucking around with the, the skiff terminology. You know the because the thing about it is is that if an offensive line lines up or offensive line coach lines up and sees tight, he's going to play tight. If he's going to line up and he sees chop, he's going to play chop. Correct. If he lines up and sees star dog, he's going to block star dog. Right. You know what I mean? And so, like, um, I think having the ability for an offensive line coach to see tight and block tight and then slant, right. that's the best. Correct. But then it's a matter of when you're doing it. And then, so, like, those would be eagle. Those would be slide. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Instead of lining up in there and stemming it, mm -hmm. right? Just moving to it, that'd be ideal. And that's what we want to get to, yeah. too. Yeah, it just nice. wasn't there. I wasn't yeah. able to do that mm -hmm. much. You know? Yeah. I'd like to, I'd like for that to be easier. I mean, the, there's, the components on that are the linebackers understanding when to call it and then how it changes your fits, which I think for us, we've got a fair amount of that being done because we're already making the calls and we're stemming to it. Right. But then the second part, which is the, the harder part of the will, is the technique of slanting. You know, yes. Right? So if we're slanting there and they run here, you don't want that to be a gash. You'd like, that, you'd like to play another down after that. Correct. Right? And that takes a lot more. It takes a lot more. Mm -hmm. And that's where you got to decide. Like, you know, Todd's a friend of mine too. Todd and I meet every year. Yeah. Well, Todd has decided he is going to be able to slant. Yeah. Know? Right. And just like you were at Wisconsin, right. Right? type four is right. his snow right. break, right. right? And that's going to be run right. every you know, sixth down, right? And right. then he's going to, right? He's going to be bringing chop out and start off, right? Or right. right. well, he's going to be in nickel defense and he's running far and blood so right. and, and all that, you know what I mean? But I think that we're always going to be careful because you can't be both. Yeah. That's I right. can't sit here and say, okay, I'm going to stop everything. That's right. And the tight run, I'm going to teach Eagle, I'm going to teach Slide, I'm going to teach this, and then I'm also going to run every blitz. That's and right. Then you become, That's right. you become good at nothing. That's right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And every year, for me, the hardest thing I'm going to do as a coordinator is which one am I? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you got new players. Yeah. you got the, uh, you know, you're a different way than I am. Oh, right. which one am I? Right. Am I yeah. Movement team yeah. lines up the tight. Yeah. Or my team yeah. that can stop everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What was your biggest reason why you were now the other? We couldn't handle it. I think at, at Wisconsin. But even at Wisconsin though, we would run so let's say so let's say let's say we're in nickel. So this would be let's say we're playing an eleven personnel team. So we would carry tight. We would carry club, which was your, um, your three, uh, your three kick. You know what I mean? The eight hand drop. Oh, um, are you cloud in or not? Yeah, cloud? yeah. Roll, roll, roll. roll. Yeah. So that'd be that'd be roll. Okay. Um, we would run. Uh, yeah, chop. Dog. We would run. I think. Saw dog. And then 
we could run this as a sting was the, the fire zone that, that matched dog. So I'd say if it was, so say, yeah, this is a nickel. So let's say we're like that. Sting is just, um, sting is just that. That and then um, you know, sting was your at a over, at a over right? yeah, and then we had like over two pattern, but that that'd be it. So the only I mean, the difference with us now is that we can do that, we can do that, and then um, we can do that. When you didn't do that one, that was you. That's the difference. So I mean, it's not a lot. A lot of it ties in, you know. A lot of times, yeah. Right. But so it was just. But I guess to answer your question though is that we could handle it. You know, it's like the base, all the base fits that we had, and the detail that has to go in with that, and the recognition that needs to happen, and the fits that you know we're covering and it's got to be on point. Right. We could get that in a day. Right. Whereas at LSU, we're going. To, that takes four days. You see what I mean? And right. So we can, can never leave. You know what I mean? We have to continue to work right. so we can never like say hey I feel good about this let's go ahead and work on that right it's like you go back and then screw something like now that. it's a game now we have to play a game you yeah. know and so I've, now that's the first there's been two years kind of the first year one with you know, new players like with y'all and then the, my second is past year all those guys graduated and um, you know, went to the went to the pros and everything like there's eight guys, and so then this, this past year, all freshmen. Right. So it was like, you know, they weren't here for any of the other stuff. Right. So doing it all over again. So this is the first year where it's like, you know, I, can, I can talk about something, they can finish the sentence, they know kind of right. the, the quirks and all that. Right. And so I feel like we can do some of that because we're building off of it. You know? But I mean, um, like over one, you know, I think the ability in nickel to play tight and over is huge piece. It's like if you could play over one two packer and then sting, which is saw dog coverage. Do you play great. two packer and nickel on mixed downs? Yeah. But how do you how do you keep isn't that tough on your backers? On their fits? Uh how do you coach it as so the thing that um I always ran into was So, do you play six? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let me say this: like, if, if, we're, if we're carrying sting, if we're the full. I was an easy question. So, if all we're going to do is just play over two power, and all we're going to do is play over one, we're just going to watch four guys, and that's all we got. Then a six is easy, it makes sense. But say we're running sting, we're running different pressures. Then the, the, the way that I really like to play is if the back's in a near, so if there's no tight end, you're a loose five. If the, there is a tight end, then it's off the back. The back is to the tight end, playing the six. If the back's in the pistol or away from the tight end, you would trace it. You know, play an yeah, we would, we would yeah, be outside, but on reach, come underneath. Correct. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So like if the back was away from a tie in, mm -hmm. that's what we would play. That was my rule. Yeah. That was my rule out of um, saw right. or um, field three yeah. for my rusher yeah. when I was at Kentucky. Yeah. He was two to the back, he was six, so yeah. the mic could right. handle that, he could squeeze it. Mm -hmm. Right? If he was away from the back, right. he just played with so we can stop outside zone. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so we, we came up with because you know they're, they're IDing the guys they're ID and they're saying they're saying that's a, that's your DF defender and overreach it. Yeah, you have a chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We played a ton of eights. I'm gonna get into that too with you man. We played a ton of eights this year, but my pass pressure was oh yeah. Was, was you know, not very really good. Yeah. Because they're thinking I gotta come under this tight end. Oh, yeah. Out, as opposed to 
not yeah. attacking. And yeah, that's the way it should be attacking, and then it's like there's a freedom. It's hard to you know, be like you know, yeah. you train and you train someone to be like um, it's kind of like it's like driving in the um, it's driving down here like the clean freeways and everything. It's like you're being civilized, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. Uh, yeah, nice, you know what I mean? Right. But when you get back when you get back um, in the grid of all of it, it's like, oh, you know what I mean? Right. That's the thing. Right. right. And you can go where all this is nice, but once you're in that trace, man, you we're, we're giving you the license. We're, you're yeah. free to go. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. that, that was my so trace for us, the problems I have with that, right? I know I'm really, we're really getting them off. But my traces, okay, were attacking the just like you would a track. Yeah. And they were getting so tight on that guy. Mm -hmm. And if he was in the past, they weren't here. I got you. Right? Yeah. And they were so worried about being spills that they weren't coming from here. Mm -hmm. At this angle, they were more pathetic. Right. right. And so then, when it was past, they weren't here. Right. They were there. Right. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, I, I'm... I'm contemplating whether I need to be traces or do I need to be nines. Right. Right. I know I'm not going to be as good as wrong. Right. When I'm a nine, because they right. can attack that C gap and you never have a guy in there. Right. But we, I also know that we need to get more pressure on the quarterback. Yeah. What What was your philosophy? On that? Uh, they depend. I mean, that's all. That's really good. Uh, I think because it's it, it's true. I think that. Well, I guess first of all, the technique would be like. A, if this was, if I'm going to trace that socket right there, if I'm going to work off that socket, okay. right, so like this, what we try to do is push off of this foot and step like that, right, okay. so get the, but we wanted to have width, so we, we didn't cheat the alignment, you know what I'm saying, so the, the linebacker's got to make them right, either way. How make, far did he come from? It'd be the yard outside. The yard outside. Okay. Okay. We got to we got to make it so he comes and gets us, because that's a, it's the same thing, if you show him star dog, you know, block star dog. You know what I mean? Right. You show them chop, they're going right. to show them trace, they're going to block trace. It's right. like, well, we would get, if we lined up too tight like this, mm -hmm. right, and say, you know, there's an overhang over us, yeah. they would block out, yeah. out, 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 which is fine. Right. Um, but you'd rather them not block out, right. rather than ID the guy in here, and you have the one on one. Correct. Instead of that guy's three, and they're all blocking you out this way, three on and out. Yeah. Right. And so we'd still be wide like this, and so that way, but now if that happens, and they just fan it for whatever reason, he's got to make you right, right? So that was part of it, you know what I mean? But then, then the space allows you, if there's a pass or something like that, you're here, then you're rolling. You know? Right. But yeah. So you didn't worry about the fan. If, no. he, if he based you. Linebackers, yeah. Yeah. You only came under the reach. Yeah. yeah. So if you were a trace, right. okay? Right. And then... Yeah, and then the other part with the trace though too was it helped you with um, spills. You know what I mean? You could like say, you know, like, uh, you're spilling, you're on that track. You know, right. so you're a spill guy, so they're going to see it as a tight, hopefully, right. and you're leveraging and tight, and now here you're spilling. You know I mean? Okay. Um, let me ask this one question here. So first of all, so when you went to Packer, yeah. okay, you're here, okay, was he in it or out of it? Out of it. Okay, so he's out of it, okay, and you're cloud this, right? Yeah. Okay. So you're eight-man spacing, right? Mm -hmm. So your D-gap defender, right, you would have to gun roll, correct? Yes. So to the back. This guy here is the D-Rap. He's there. Correct. Right. Right. Correct. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Let me see this. So, then, all right, put this here. And obviously, it'd be off here. So, your d gap defender is technically him or him. It's over here. Right. Okay. Yeah, we do that to it. Okay. Now, when they went to a two-back look, did you always use this one? Yes. 
and the three went here and went there and walked away. Went there and left. Okay? So now you're in two backs. So now you're here, here, and you're using them. Correct? And these guys are still there. Yeah, a lot of it is an in between the trace technique. You know what I mean? Call it a fist. This guy. That guy would, yeah. Yes. He would make, we would call that still an eight. I just told him yeah. to make an eight call. Right. Yeah. And then that guy would play. Yeah. So he could stay wider for one. That's right. That's right. And then, uh, I mean, also with this too, and this is, um, I mean, if you know, we had it every week and the guys understood it and all that, but you know, I'm calling this generally uh, second inning, second inning. Right. I'm calling, I'm usually not calling at the start of the game. Hey, this, we're going to run over two packer or one. Yes. All this other stuff could be happening. I'm You're calling this on a 60% pass set. Yes. Correct. The 60% pass set. Correct. Yes. Okay. okay. And then you're not calling it first and ten. You're not calling it second and medium. You're not. You're, you're calling it on a 60% pass set. Correct. Yeah. Right. And so there'll be times. Yeah. There'll be times where, I, you know, like if we're if we're winning the game, you know, yeah. there wasn't a lot of that. There's pressure. If we're winning the game, okay. Over two pack a little bit more. You know, then I'm calling on first and ten. Right. So, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then um, the only thing I was going to say then is from a run standpoint, you want them to count that too. You want them to count it as, hey, they run over quarters or however they see it on first and ten and they run it on. You know, right. So they give you, you the want them to cut it. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yeah. All right. So, um, now, you're in your open one. Mm -hmm. Okay, your three still goes here? No, we try to get it the same way, yeah. So it'll be the same. It'll be the same. It goes here. Okay, and now you're here and here, and you're flow camping, correct? Uh, we play a lot more of, uh, you know what we need to do it is um, the, our guy, uh, Kenny, with all the flies and all the, and that was like a, that was that was um, a big experience for us, man. You know what I mean? We yeah. started with young players and all the flight suite, just misdirection. Right. Like when you guys came, we were kind of just getting ready for it or right in the middle of it, you know, that yeah. shit. And so the you know, in the past, like, uh, like with Bill and all that, we would key it key a guy, you know what I mean, and do all that and come down. Yeah. Uh, but then the problem was your base rule was you would run with motions, you know, your guy was your guy. And, you know, I think there'd be times in the season where we would play people at Wisconsin, I never had the guts to do it here, where you would play key in motion, you just bump the key, you know. Uh, which is pretty uh, there's some steps involved with all that. And so write that down, that's a good point. When you're when we call it flow can you have to stick the motion. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure I covered that with Shannon. Yeah. Because if you don't stick the motion, you're bumping the key guy. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, the best way to go play Matt was to keep the box set and block and roll. And so we would bring go three on two. Yeah. So you would now bump them over the same way. Mm -hmm. And this guy would come down. Yep. And then you just he would go have it pose. He went there. Right. He went there, right? Correct. We're seeing they're running power, they're running counter, they're running whatever, they're running correct. And there's a lot of motion they have to have. Do you do the same thing under now? Yes. Under. So yes. You're, the, the smoke break is over for those guys, as you used to say. Mm -hmm. and where they can just yeah. Go. Like, here's a good example. <clears throat> here's, here's one there. Let's see if I can remember this. I can get this right. Yesterday was Bill's first day. So like we're right now we're playing it 
and key. But here's solo. So if we're in solo, we're here, we're here. Now the advantage of solo is an emotion, we can rock and roll guy, right? As long as they stay front side, we're great. If they run any of them coming back, right? We're gonna counter. I mean that sucks. You know I mean? So I say say they run counter over here. Right? So we'll do a spill that. I'm gonna say we're here and I say he comes back, counter or Y. So this would be rock back, turn back. So he'd be here, right? He'd be here, he'd be here. And so it would be difficult to get, I think there's, there's just a lot of space for that guy to come up all the way over. Right. And so there's concerns with all that. Now, you know, how do you want to play if the back's over here and that bluff's an, an issue, or say it's pistol, and now he's got to come outside. You know, when does he know when does this guy know? Correct. You see what I mean? Right. So you know, you, they could run this same play run counter, right? And you know, what you don't want to do in counter, I don't think, is you don't want to spill that, keep him here and then the force is coming from over here. You know what I mean? But then if you want to keep the bluff play consistent, that's what it would be. And all these the, the counter stuff I think um, made this a little bit um, a, of a conflict for him. Yeah, so then you could key it. Okay, well, if you key it, and so now, now we're going to say the same thing, we'll say it right here. So now we're keying this guy. So now, you know, um, uh, there is somewhat of a quarter shell. You know, so the, the different formations can, can make you have to work for that. And all that, but it, let's say they run and count here, and now you got this guy. Has, so we got some spill, right? He's coming around. Okay, but now the thing is here, do we change these rules now? You see what I'm saying? So now we say, all right, hey, you're always spilling like this, right? Because you want him outside. So as right. far as you know, it's the rock back, turn back stuff. Like that different. Right. You know what I mean? And then it becomes, so if, you, if you do it like that, right? he comes back, and we should got that, you can stay always outside. So it's like, whose rules are you changing? Well, you know what I mean? And, right. I, and I felt like we always key, this was always the way, we always spill, you know what I'm saying? And we always just gapped it out, and they, they always played their single guy. So this was the way that we played for years. The problem with playing that way is the fly sweep. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what guys out there. Let's try to run more solo. And now once you're in the solo, do you really want to spill to a guy that's coming from all the way over here? So now you rock back, turn back rules. And once you do that, how does this guy know his counter, how does he know his bluff on the inside and outside? Yes. And so, you know. So what are you doing now? You're doing solo? Now we're, we're going to build a box. So like say that. So we call sleeves. So anytime, so, so like say it's out, say it's here. All the way box. So now. And the safety's here, and here, and it's these three, these two. And so if any motion comes, you just rock and roll. And if they get counter coming back, you know, you leverage just it, sends it to him. So, everything's a box. But that, but that was all for Matt. Matt kind of got us in that thing. And, and if the fullback goes to the flat, flat the mic has to take him on the block. On the bluff, yeah. So yeah, if, it, if, it, if this were to come like this, yeah. he's got to yeah. So it'll be here, but then you know we try to play it to where if he sits, and so I said you know it's this and this, like he'll sit. And he's going to play that first breath. Yeah, the roll is out. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's that. So like you know, we played a lot of bass. What do you call that? Squeeze. So squeeze. It's still the one, but we're just squeezing. So you've got um, solo, solo key, squeeze, squeeze. Yeah, we write that down. I, I have, you've told me that before. Yeah. So that for us would be three way. Yeah. yeah. And then I haven't run any solo, and the other one for us would be low. Yeah. Because if we were like this, let's say we're like this, and let's say this is, uh, we're in bass, let's say. We played bass almost exclusively this year, and those were the best people. So we'd be in here, this would be solo, come back in. This would be, um, we call this funnel. So squeeze with the safety funnel is with the death. You know, it's just a base. So it's just be the same thing. It's just three on two. Okay. So if we're, if we're
So the squeeze was basically out of your over and under. Right. Squeeze and funnel. <coughs> funnel was out of your tight. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. But that gave us, uh, I don't know, the best of both worlds of, because uh, of all this, I'd say, we're going to get this play, but it's going to be with this motion, that flat motion. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and then off of that, they can run counter or they can run cat flex off the road. App State's here. Do you want to move this downstairs uh, into one of the, we can do the unit room. The auditorium has class and so what time? Yeah. Until noon. Yeah, it's a little. It'll just go down to the unit room. What time is it? It's noon. Are you hungry? Uh, There's more coffee too. Okay. Is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, have coffee. Yeah. we have food okay. downstairs too. So we'll, we'll, we'll go down there and grab something to eat. So, uh, what did, um, <coughs> hand me my, um, crutches. Yeah, please. It's a good thing we had this clinic earlier. Really. You guys didn't have to see DJ in rough shape. You have to see me what? In rough shape with the hip. Oh, yeah, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Yeah. 